Hi, I'd like to start doing some conversion videos on this channel, but before I do that, I'd like to get a video out of the way on Sprugu. I'm sure I'd use Sprugu a lot in those videos. It's my go-to glue for working with plastics, and it's a great gap filler. There's a lot of good information out on YouTube already about Sprugu, but I couldn't find any one video I could refer people to that gave all the information I think is necessary in a concise way. And because Sprugu can add a little bit of roughness to the model, I'll add a little section about acrylic gesso, which is a great product for final smoothing and gap filling. This requires extra thin plastic cement. If you haven't used it before, it's a chemical solvent that dissolves the styrene that hard plastic miniature is made of. So if you put it between two pieces and push them together, the parts will dissolve and mix together, and once the cement evaporates they'll be fused into a single piece. The brand I use is Tamiya, I'm sure there are others that'll work, but this is the only one I've tried, and it's pretty reasonably priced and available all around the world. I use the quick set type, an alternative would be the standard stuff, which dissolves plastic and evaporates a bit slower. It gives you a bit of a longer working time, which could be a benefit if you're not very confident with it. Another benefit to the standard stuff is that since it evaporates more slowly, there will be less vapour in the air at any one time, so if you're sensitive to the solvent fumes it might be a little bit more pleasant. Though if you've got a more serious intolerance, I don't think plastic cement would be the right tool for you. You'll want two jars. The first one we'll just keep as it is. It's useful for applying the goo, but it's also good stuff to have on its own. For the second jar, and this is where it gets a little bit awkward, you'll want the jar with a little brush applicator and between two thirds and three quarters of a jar of the liquid. Hopefully you'll have used a little bit already, or you'll have an extra plastic cement container to transfer it into. But if I had to start again from scratch, I think I would buy two jars and end up dumping out a quarter to a third of one of them. That would be a bit of a waste, it's probably two or three dollars here. And I'd dump that out by evaporating it outside, not down the sink. So I've got two thirds of a bottle here, and I've just taken the label off for filming. The little brush is friction fitted and I'd recommend taking that off now using pliers or tweezers. Obviously, only an idiot would touch it with their bare hands while it's still wet. The other ingredient is plastic. I prefer using unusual colours so it stands out against the grey that most models are made of. This stuff is the sprue from Rendra bases that come free with Perry Miniatures. Just cut it up and put it in. To start with it's best to be cautious and add too little, and we can add more once this is dissolved. I'm just mixing the pieces up and keeping them below the waterline so they'll dissolve faster. Here we go after just under 4 hours of dissolving. You can see the sprue is dissolved into a paste at the bottom, and it will take quite a bit of stirring to get this mixed into an even liquid. You might be tempted to add an agitator, but since it's a glass jar I'd be pretty hesitant to have a metal object bouncing around inside. And this is after a couple of minutes mixing, and you can see the liquid's still a little bit drippy, so I'm just adding some more bits of sprue. These ones you can see are just chewed up with a pair of clippers to make them dissolve faster. Another couple of hours have gone by, I've added a bit more sprue again, and I've finally got it to the perfect mixture. I have a few copies of that piece of sprue, so I've clipped out an identical copy of what went into the jar, and you can compare that to the amount of liquid I started with when estimating it for yourself. Just remember that this is with the quick set variety. If you use another type of cement, it might take a different amount of plastic. I've also pushed the brush back into place. I think this is the perfect texture. I can take the brush out of the jar, tap it once against the inside of the bottleneck, and move it around cleanly. It's thick enough that it doesn't dribble anywhere, but thin enough that we don't get any strings forming between the brush and the jar. So for using it, first I'll show you a fairly rough job. This is one of the Perry 15th century horses that never quite goes together very smoothly. First I stick a whole bunch of goo around the connection points, squish it together so some squeezes out, and then use the plain old extra thin just to smooth out that excess. 
I'm using the plastic cement to thin down the glue, spread it out and potentially mop some of it up and wipe it off on a paper towel. If you need a little extra strength you can start scratching the surface to increase the surface area or even drill a little hole. I don't think you need the extra strength to attach arms with this stuff, but I'm just doing it here to demonstrate. You can also use this for plastic pinning. It's not as strong as pinning with metal and super glue, but it's a little bit more convenient. First I'll drill the holes in the two pieces. The best pin would be some styrene rod, but here I'm just using the point of a plastic bayonet. I'm just doing this pretty roughly, I didn't measure and it turned out the pin was too long and I made a little bit of a mess of it, but it was pretty easy to clean up. Again I was just using this figure as an example, and when attaching heads I wouldn't normally add any extra scratches or pins. With what I've showed you so far, sprue goo hasn't done anything that couldn't be done with standard plastic cement. But here's the advantage. In this seam where we would normally have a gap between the two pieces, instead we've got a raised bead, a bit like a mould line. And that will dry to normal plastic, just like the rest of the model. And so we can clean that off the way you'd clean off a mould line. I'm just scratching it off here with an old scalpel. And at the end any dust or scruffy bits can be redissolved into the body of the figure just by adding a thin coat of plastic cement. So does it work with conversions and stick in parts where they're not designed to go? So here we go, I've just cut two parts to fit. I'll add a generous coat of goo to each side of the join, smush them together, and then if there's still a gap we can start shoveling on some more goo and just feathering out the edges and blending that in so it's smooth. So this will be a very secure join. It holds itself in place as it tries, and all the gaps are filled in one step. No green stuff required. So that was a pretty rough job. Here we go for quite a clean and smooth one. This is a cultist psyker from the 40k Blackstone Fortress game. It's a model with an awful lot of finicky joins to it. So I'm just being a bit more restrained with the application, both the goo and then particularly that final smoothing cement. So he's assembled now, but there's still a big gap on the side of his chest. So to start with, I'm wetting the area around that gap with the thin cement, adding a blob of goo onto it. And then it's quite important just to smooth the edges into the plastic so you don't get a big blob once it's dried. So with the horse I used a blunt scalpel to clean off the excess. This time to get it a bit smoother I'm just using 600 grit sandpaper. And I'm using a wee curved scalpel blade where the sandpaper won't fit. And again I'm cleaning up the dust with an extra layer of extra thin cement. Using sprue glue alone, it's hard to get a final smoothness unless the figure is shaped in a way that accommodates sandpaper easily. And I'm sure we've all had the experience of thinking a model was smooth and then after priming discovering it wasn't. But that's where the second product comes in. This is acrylic gesso. It's great for that final smoothness, though it wouldn't be capable of filling any major gaps. So this is made out of a powdered stone like chalk or marble mixed in with an acrylic medium. It forms a type of paint that's quite thick, and as it dries it shrinks less than other paints would. Though if you put it on thick it will still shrink. I think it works best on top of primer, though it can be used on bare models, and it is sandable. Some hobby companies have made their own versions of this. There's Vallejo Plastic Putty, and I believe Citadel's Liquid Green Stuff is the same thing. These are very thick though, and to get a smooth coat on the model, you'd need to pre-thin them on a palette before you use them, so I'd recommend getting it from an art supply company, where it's also more reasonably priced. It will be available in any art supply store, and probably most stationery stores that have a shelf of art supplies. 
To hopefully make this easier to film, I've primed the model red and mixed a grey gesso. And this is pretty rough on the brushes. Not too bad, but you don't want to use your good ones. So to smooth it out, you'll want something fairly soft. I've got a formerly good brush that's well into retirement here. But there are cheaper synthetic watercolour brushes that are quite soft. This works a lot like gap filling with the goo. First we wet the surface with water, then put some of the gesso over top of the gap, and finally with a wet brush just feather out the edges. And you can do multiple coats of this until it's dry. This is also quite good for filling layer lines on 3D prints. If you have any questions about sprue goo, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Coming up I've got a few more videos on the way. First one's a short one about using sprue goo to texture plastic models to look like steel. Then there'll be a painting video. And afterwards, a video returning to the world of turnip about converting and painting banners. If any of those take your fancy, feel free to subscribe.